So, I have a theory. Oh yeah! I'm feeling young, I'm feeling spry today, guys. The mortise and tenon, it's a thing. All it really is, is a piece of wood with a tenon on it, going into a piece of wood with a mortise in it. Mortise is a hole, a tenon is a thing sticking out of the piece of wood, you put the two together, you have one of the fundamental joints of woodworking. Here's the thing about the mortise and tenon. There's a million different variations to strengthen or alter the joint to your purposes. For example, I recently did a liquor bar with a mid-century modern apron and base to it. And so this is nothing more than a mortise and tenon in a round leg with a giant haunch on here. And by the time that this apron was cut, you curve this out, you give a little shape to it, it's nice and sleek and sexy. Alternatively, you have the pinned mortise and tenon. So, this is nothing more than your standard mortise and tenon, but it's got two holes running through it. So when you put this together, you take a couple of pins and you drive them through, and you have what's called a mechanical advantage. Now what makes the pinned mortise and tenon so strong is by the time I drive these pins into the joint. This joint is locked in place. It's physically impossible to get this joint apart. And so that creates a mechanical advantage as opposed to the strength that glue creates because it's impossible to break this joint without breaking that tenon off. This is why you see this joint in timber framed houses where the mortise and tenon needs to remain in place without the use of adhesives for hundreds of years. Now, why can't they use glue in a timber framed house? That's an excellent question. I'm very glad you asked. Generally speaking, when you frame a timber house, you're using green wood, right? Meaning that the wood is not dried. It's still wet, it's fresh off the tree, it's easier to cut. And as that wood dries and shrinks, it makes that joint even tighter. So that's a reason to use green timbers. But because there's moisture in the timber, you can't use water-based glues. Your PVA glues are water-based. Your hide glues, which is what they were using for thousands of years before the 20th century, also water-based. So you can't apply a water-based glue to a wood with high moisture content and that's gonna be somewhere above the 20% range. So this is why the pin mortise and tenon became a thing. This is why mechanical advantage is a very distinct advantage. This is why it's an important thing to consider. However, with the dried timbers that we use in the furniture world and with contemporary adhesives, I'm going to submit a theory that many mortise and tenons with higher amount of glue surface is actually stronger than the mechanical advantage you get from a single large mortise and tenon. Now you might be saying to yourself, Eric, this is an absurd theory. Everybody knows that a single large mortise and tenon is going to last forever. You've seen it in a million old cathedral doors. They last a long time. How can you possibly say that many small mortise and tenons using contemporary adhesives is a stronger joint? I'm glad you asked. There's a thing called lignin. Lignin is the natural adhesive in the fibers of the wood that actually hold those straws or those fibers together. So this is really nothing more than a bunch of straws held together by this natural adhesive called lignin. Modern adhesives, starting with the advent of yellow glue or PVA glue or Elmer's white glue or whatever other modern contemporary adhesive you want to use, is stronger than the lignin in the tree. And you can test this theory, right? If you take two pieces of wood and you glue them together like this, and then you try to split that joint, what's going to happen 100 times out of 100 is that joint is actually going to break away and follow the fibers of the tree because the natural adhesive in those fibers is less strong than the adhesive that you use to glue them together. Therefore, my theory stands thusly. If I have a single mortise and tenon, no matter the length and mechanical advantage it's giving me, I have less surface area for glue than I do in a mortise and tenon with nothing more than a stub tenon over here and dominoes or floating tenons or a bunch of integral tenons, if you like, in there creating a larger amount of glue surface. Well, that's all good and well in theory, but Eric, what evidence do you have to support your theory? 
I think it's story time. Oh, hey, I didn't see you guys come by. Welcome to my brand new long running segment, Eric Tells a Story. So, the year is 2007, 2009, somewhere in that range. And I'm working with a gentleman named Rob Hare up in New York, a brilliant man. He had made 20, 25 years ago, these two giant entry doors into a theater made out of mahogany, somewhere in the range of eight foot by four foot a piece, using nothing more than biscuits and epoxy in the corners. Questionable at best, I know, but we're not gonna judge him, he's a great guy. So, I help him move these doors, traveling down the highway at 80 miles an hour, and something happens. The door flew off the back of the truck on the highway at 80 miles an hour. And as they crash to the highway, they explode into a million pieces, except the four joints that were glued together with biscuits and epoxy. So this tells me one of two things. Either biscuits are way stronger than we give them credit for, which I believe is true to an extent, or contemporary adhesives are much stronger in volume than the mechanical nature of a traditional mortise and tenon. Interesting. All right, all right, I hear you. All this theory is good and well, but how do you actually integrate this into the real world in an actual project? Well, some of you saw last week, I'm making this door. This door is not small. I don't know if you can tell, but it's quite a large door. It's nearly the same size as those mahogany doors. It's four feet long, it's 90 inches tall. So when this thing is actually glued up and hung, there is a ton of leverage on these joints. So we're gonna see how they actually hold up in time. Now this should give you some sense of scale as to how large this actual door is. But what I've done in this door, as you saw in the joint that I showed you, is use the small dominoes. I don't have an XL domino, and I don't think you need one for this particular application. So in this door, I've got eight dominoes down below, I've got six dominoes in the middle, and I've got four dominoes up top on both sides. So that's a total of, I believe, 36 dominoes if my quick math brain is working correctly. That should be loads of glue surface in combination with that stub tenon to create a really strong and rigid door. And the reason I know this is because this thing is dry fit right now. There's ne'er a bit of glue in here and there's zero racking on this door as it is. So currently, that is nothing but mechanical advantage of a series of small tenons. Now, this brings us back to our sample joint. I am gonna glue this up with epoxy rather than yellow glue or PVA glue, mostly for the sake of ease of glue up, right? My open time in an epoxy is about 45 minutes, depending on what I'm using, versus the five to 10 minutes of a yellow glue. And if I'm gluing up all of those joints simultaneously, I want to make that as easy as possible on yours truly. But what it also does is give a bit of added strength because your yellow glue has a lower shearing point than most of your contemporary epoxies. So by the time I actually add in epoxy to this joint, this thing really should be close to bomb proof. I sincerely doubt that if I were to make a six foot version of a traditional mortise and tenon, and this mortise and tenon with the integrated dominoes and attempt to break them apart, that this would fail before the traditional mortise and tenon. In fact, I'm so confident in that, I may have to make an entirely separate video testing that theory. But this is, of course, a theoretical video. This is, of course, a video about my theory and how I integrated this into my current project. So I suppose we'll simply see over the next few years, given the amount of abuse that a shop door tends to take, how this joint will actually hold up. And I am quite confident it's gonna hold up well. So friends, that is this week's theory and video, I suppose. Uh, I hope it was informational. I hope it was educational. I hope it was edutational. That's not a word. I hope you had a good time thinking about the way my brain works. I hope this taught you something about mortise and tendons and or glue strength that you didn't know before. And if you have opinions on this theory, leave them in the comments below because you know the people who disagree with me will leave them in the comments below. But for now, friends, time for me to get out of here and go make some sawdust. Have a delightful week. Go do a thing, go be creative, go take aesthetic risks, but maybe not physical ones. And I will see y'all in the next video. Until then, cheers.